You're listening to Brighton Nights with me, Boogaloo Stew, here on Brighton's Juice 107.2. And with me now here in the studio, my guest, Dan Llewellyn-Williams, here to tell us about his fringe show, A Regular Little Houdini, which opened tonight and runs until the 3rd of June at the Warren Theatre Box. Welcome to the show, Dan. Hi, Stu, thank you. So you've just come off stage. How was this evening's show? Was it a corker? <laughs> Exhausting. Yeah, no, it was. It was really good. Well, thanks for coming in. Can you tell us a bit about the show? Because obviously... A lot of our listeners will be familiar with the story of Houdini. What what kind of uh, narrative does this story have? The story follows the um, the journey. It's a coming of age story of a young lad growing up in the Docklands of South Wales in Newport. Um, he's obsessed with Houdini. He comes from a very lowly working class background, and uh, he tries to emulate Houdini's uh, great tricks and uh, es- escapades, and uh, ends up getting himself into a hell of a lot of. Uh, trouble okay. um, along the way uh, charming a lot of people but he stays in this sort of fantasy world as he's growing up uh, he lives a very hard life by modern standards but uh, the main character remains positive throughout and then all of these sort of uh, industrial history just happens around him in this little bubble of fantasy where, where he's obsessed with magic and Houdini. Okay. And is it set in the modern day then? or is it? No, it's set in 1905. It stretches okay. from 1905 to 1913. Okay. So when Houdini was at his height, I suppose. Yeah. It, it straddles the two um, big... European tours that Houdini did and both of them, so the first tour was in 1905 second tour in 1913 and both tours, he he, like today it seems odd but at the time it made sense, he kicked off in Newport in South Wales because at the time it was a big industrial hub and he was um, he he was a sort of a, a champion of the working classes and in America he did very well in, the, in all the sort of industrial towns uh, in middle America and uh, he chose Newport because he had this beautiful grand theatre um, which has sadly been knocked down and this play is about it's it's an homage to uh, the Victoria to the Edwardian period but also to to my hometown which is uh, has had pretty rotten luck of late um, but also it, it, it's 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 really about positivity about hope and about magic right okay and is it based on any factual stories is, is it was there a little chap who was obsessed with Houdini there may have been okay <laughs> <laughs> but Possibly not. No, he's complete fabrication. The main character and all of his immediate family are all are, are all um, invented by me. They're they're sort of an amalgamation of of, of several generations of my family, of uh, young scallywags who grew up in the in the docks, playing in the mud and the, on the industrial artifacts there. Um, but it, it's set within the real framework, the the real historical framework of Houdini's visits and this terrible industrial accident that happened, which is very, um, it has very little exposure. Nobody ever talks about it. I oh, didn't even learn about it in school. Uh, the Newport Docks disaster in 1909, 40 men were buried alive um, when they were building the the sea lock in the in the dock extension. Right, right, okay. So, did you discover these? Uh, have you been? A, a long-term fan of Houdini, and have you always wanted to sort of bring this story of the disaster into into the, the theatre as well? Is this is this your dream? It, it to, is my dream. Right. It is my dream f- for sure because it's it's doing exactly what I've always wanted to do, which would be a storyteller to tell to tell stories that are meaningful, that that um, talk about human conflict and the human condition, um, and about positivity, primarily. But in actual fact, I'm not a Houdini fan. I, I am now. Right. Um, I I came across all this information as I was doing my research, and that's part of what I I love doing about making theatre is I love the research phase, and 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 I, I love to to then trans transmute that joy of of um, of uh, of history of storytelling into to the audience. Right, Dan, if you'll stay with us, we'll talk some more about the show in a few moments. We'll have some music first. Here's Fleetwood Mac. Still with me here in the studio, I'm talking to Dan Llewellyn-Williams about his show, A Regular Little Houdini, which is running at the Warren Theatre Box until the 3rd of June. So, Dan, tell us who's in the show. It's a one-man show. It's, it's a one-person you. show. It's just so, me. So you're playing... I play several different <coughs> characters. I play Houdini. I play the boy. Right. I play his father. His gra- I play several generations of his family. His mother, his grandmother, his um, best friend, uh, his father and his grandfather. The his- grief. Yeah. How do you go about doing this in a theatrical sense? How do you transform yourself from one character to another? Is it just from using voice and physical changes. Yeah, I mean there's lots of sort of different techniques and different tricks that we use and and, and, and that have come out in the rehearsal period. But I, I would call I would turn this style poor theatre and um 
necessity being the mother of invention um, it, it, it creates a, a very uh, inventive world because I, I literally I'm there stood on stage an empty stage with a suitcase the clothes I wear and within myself within the within the, the uh, suitcase I have everything I need to <coughs> tell a one hour story of magic of daring do of ju bridge jumps and escapes and yeah the, the invention is where, is, is where it gets interesting did you work with a director to develop all these different characters yes yeah. and who, who directed them? Joshua Richards right he's got a, a, a very rich history of doing one person shows he did a very famous um, Richard Burton show which has been touring around the world for about 20 years and he's won loads of awards with it so yeah, I knew I knew the man I wanted when I when I, okay. when I started writing the show and he read the script and said yeah I love it I want to be on board very good and of course I assume the show does contain copious amounts of magic it does and and where did you sort of learn the magic how, do, how did you learn the magic I learned it on the road on the uh, uh, when doing the show um, the the show was the catalyst for me for me learning everything about this so I'm, right. I'm, I'm learning as the audience will be learning a lot of this for the first time obviously I had the benefit of, of practice yeah but yeah yeah it's uh, I'm, I'm not a I, I'm not a, a magic nut but I am now do you do the famous escapology routine in the show? I do. Did? I do my boy's version of it. Okay. Which <laughs> is, uh, um, I, it would be too much to tell. No, no, you don't <laughs> want to give it away. Yeah, mm. absolutely. So um, you're here for four nights. You've already done one night. You're here until the 3rd of June. And then you actually go off to America. You're, you're touring in Hollywood, in San Diego. And then you're in Edinburgh for a, for a month. So you're, you're going to be living the glamorous life there for the summer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. How did that come about? Is it, a, is it a fringe festival in America that you're going to as well? So I'm going to two fringe festivals. I'm going to San Diego and Hollywood, as he's mentioned. Um, so they're similar to Brighton and Edinburgh. But then I'm also doing two theatres as well. I'm doing one in Oregon. Okay. And I'm doing one in San Francisco as well. So I'm going to be in America for a total of seven weeks. And then I come back, do four weeks in Edinburgh. I'm already doing a, um, a theatre tour now. I've started three weeks ago. Right. So I'm already well into the... Is life on the tour. road, is it good? Do you enjoy that aspect of it? I do, I do. I have children and uh, I, I do miss them. I, I get to see them on weekends. Right. Um, and they're going to be coming out to America with me and uh, I, I want to expose them to this, uh, these fringe festivals and mm -hmm. to, to sort of yeah. see, to see street theatre and, and yes. I've never heard of the Hollywood Fringe actually. I didn't it's, know that existed. It's seven years old. It, right. they, they're really putting a lot into it actually. It's quite, it, yeah. it, it looks quite, it looks quite cool I have to say. Yeah. Sounds quite glamorous. It is. I mean it's right, <laughs> and it's, 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 it's right on um, Santa Monica Boulevard. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, it's right in the heart of Hollywood. Fabulous. So, are there any um, teasers online for the show? Can, it, can people have a look before they buy tickets to come and see you? Yes. If you go to irregularlittlehoudini.co.uk, on there there's links to uh, YouTube videos, radio interviews, um, reviews, synopsis, okay. production shots, all sorts. Great. And links to, um, to the tour as well and where to buy tickets if you're interested. Fabulous. OK, well, Dan, thanks for coming in tonight and uh, good luck with the rest of the run here in Brighton. Thank you very much, Steve. This is Brighton Nights on Juice 107.2.